Please remember that on a lot of these, as I told you yesterday, you can still use drawing the pictures of the faces to find the surface area and lateral area if you want. But it's probably best to, and it's quicker a lot of times, to use the formulas that I'm going to show you today. Cylinder would kind of be the one that's a little bit off. Now, we're going to be taking a look at just right prisms and right cylinders today. You may remember I told you yesterday you shouldn't have used the word right triangular prism when we use that one because right in this chapter means something else. Right basically means that that prism or that cylinder goes straight up. Okay? Or there's a 90 degree angle at the bottom. Look at it that way. Notice a lot of these have kind of been tipped over. For example, the hexagonal prism and the pentagonal prism. Somebody kind of tipped those over because the base is the pentagon. And, but think of it this way, if it was sitting on the pentagon, that prism would go straight up. Or this cylinder, I would agree, would go straight up. But I'd say this one down here that says rectangular prism at the bottom, that does not go straight up. So that is not a right prism. That's what we're going to talk about a little bit more tomorrow. That's called an oblique prism. The formulas will not work for this type right here. The formulas only work for a right prism and a right cylinder, meaning the ones that go straight up. Okay, yes? Uh, for this one right here, the one that's oblique, what we're going to do is you have to do it by parts. You have to take apart the pieces. There is not one formula because it depends on how much it's angled. The more it's angled, the more the formula changes. And so they don't give one for that. They just say, just take apart the pieces like we were doing before. Good question. Now here are basically, as you can see, they even say right prism on it and right cylinder on it. Here for lateral area, remember that's the stuff going up. All they're saying is pH. What do you suppose P and H stand for? P is capitalized, so that should give you a hint. Yep, perimeter. But perimeter of what? You just pick whatever you want to take the perimeter of. Just any old thing, just take the perimeter and use it. The base, very good. Perimeter of the base. Now, this will work for any prism that's a right prism. The base could be a hexagon, it could be an octagon, it could be a square, whatever it is, it'll work. And so, yes, that is perimeter of the base. And H stands for height. Height of what? Height of the prism. So however tall your prism is, that's what you're going to do. And use that number. So you take the perimeter of whatever the base happens to be, and you take it times the height of that prism, and that'll give you the lateral area. Do you agree that might be a little quicker than drawing out all the faces we did yesterday, doing them separately, and then adding them up? Might be a little quicker, but only if you know how to find that information. If you don't, draw out the pictures. You may remember from yesterday we did total area. All we did basically is took the lateral area we already found, and we just added on the stuff that we hadn't talked about. And what hadn't we talked about? The bases. So you see how pH is just pretty much right there? So just take your answer from lateral area and add on 2 times B, and capital B is the area of the base. Now they can't get very specific there because the base could be a pentagon or a decagon or maybe even a rectangle. So we don't really know and so that's why we have to do that. Now why are we taking it times two though? Yeah, because there's two bases. That's why we're taking it times two. So any questions on where that formula came from or what any of that stands for? Notice I put the abbreviations in there again. And what sometimes will I use for that one? SA for surface area. Yep, so watch out for that. So no questions? All right. Now you may notice, doesn't that formula look the same as the one right there? And isn't this the exact same thing as that? It is. That's because the prism and the cylinder are very similar. They both have two bases that are congruent. But we can get much more specific for the cylinder. Because if you're looking at a cylinder, what do we call the perimeter of the base? What do we call that? Circumference, right? Isn't that what we call that? So let's make that, and is there any way for me to change that to a different object? Isn't it always going to be a circle if I have a cylinder? So we, for perimeter, we can just say, that's circumference, and that's 2 pi r, right? And then times the height. So that's much more specific. Again, I can't do that up here for the prism because I don't know what the base is. You can't do that, right? So what you can do here then is take perimeter times height, so that's the same thing, 2 pi r h, that's lateral area, and add 2 times the area of the base. Can I make the area of the base much more specific in this case? Because it can only be one thing, it's a circle. How do you find the area of a circle? Yeah, 
pi times radius squared. So cylinder is kind of nice because it specifically tells you what you need to do, where I can't really do that in the prism. Okay? So make sure you get these formulas down, because we will be using them throughout the chapter. And more than likely, you will be allowed to make a note card as we go through the chapter with the formulas on it. Your behavior will determine whether you get to use that note card on any of the assessments. Good? So here we go. I believe this is the first object. You have something similar to this. It might be easier to see the object up here. It says determine lateral area and total surface area for the following. So which formula should I use? The right prism or the right cylinder? Well, quite obviously the right prism. And it says for lateral area to take the perimeter of the base times what's it taken? Times height. Well, what is the base in this particular prism? What's the name? What's the object? It's a triangle. Very good. So basically, I have to take a look at this triangle right here, which is the base. So this is one that's been knocked over. So let's find the perimeter of that. Is that something we can find right now? I've got six, I've got eight, and then the, I don't know. You've got to find that. Oh, well, how are we going to find that? It's called Pythagorean Theorem. Now, does anybody know that one off the top of your head? Yeah, it is 10. So let's show you how to do it. 6 squared plus 8 squared would equal, we'll call it x for now. x squared. How about 6 squared is? 36, very good. Plus 64, very good. And what if I add those two? You get 100 equals x squared. Square root is 10. All right. So this measurement here is 10. So is 10 the perimeter of the base? No, 10 is just one of the sides of the base. So what is the perimeter of this base? You take 10 and 6 and 8 and you add them together and we get 24. So perimeter is 24 and that would be just inches because I was just adding inches together. Now if I were to sit this on its base, which is the triangle, how far up would it go? If it's actually sitting on the triangle, it would go up 20 inches. Very good. So now all I have to do to find lateral area is multiply. And 24 times 20 is close. 480 label inches. Again, why is it truly inches squared? Because I took inches times inches. Okay, so there's your lateral area. Am I done with this problem? found lateral area. Now I have to find total area or the surface area. The formula says for total area to take perimeter times height and add on the two bases, correct? But don't I over, almost have over half of that already? I mean, we know P times H is already 480 square inches. We already know that. Two. Now we have to find the area of the base. So what now we have to look back to our old chapters to find the area of a triangle. And to find the area of this triangle right here, we would take base times height divided by 2. And base and height have to come together at a right angle. So do we know what those two numbers are? Yes, we do. The two numbers are 8 and 6. So you take 8 times 6 divided by 2 gives you the triangle. 8 times 6 is 48. Divided by 2 is 24. I know some of you with the triangle ones are going to know, let's just not divide by 2 because we're going to multiply by 2. Just bear with me. So this 24 goes right here. And that is inches squared, correct? If you take 480, I don't know where that other 8 came from. This material is. 480 square inches plus 48 square inches is how many square inches? 528. Does it stay square inches, though? Yep. And is it 528? Do we all agree on that? Yep. See how the formula can work. But you also remember from yesterday, we did a very similar problem, and drawing out the faces worked equally as accurately. But maybe not as quick. But they both work.
we're going to get this one at least just set up and then I will have you work on it for a little bit and then I will save the recording. So how much cardboard is needed to make the sides of 30,000 frozen concentrate orange juice cans? Does everybody at least know what I'm talking about? They're about this big and they're rock solid when you take them out of the freezer and they have the concentrate in it and then you unravel it and then, okay, all right, so we know what that is. Uh, it, it says each can is six inches tall and three inches in diameter, and this is a replica of the can here. Uh, so we know it's six inches tall, so we'll put that right here. And we know that three inches in diameter, and remember diameter does mean all the way across. So are we going to use the right prism formula or the right cylinder formula? Right cylinder. Remember, right in this case means it went straight up, which it does. And that particular formula, well, first, do we need lateral area or total area is the first question. Does cardboard go all the way through everything on those frozen concentrate cans? No. What's normally on top and bottom of those things? Is that cardboard? Yeah, tin or metal of some kind, right? So do we need total area or lateral area? Just lateral area. Very good. And again, if you read, it just said the sides. <laughs> so that, that's helpful as well. So basically, this stuff in here is all going to be cardboard, where that and that is kind of the metal. Right. Okay. So basically, we are going to take the perimeter times height, that's the general formula, but what is perimeter of this thing? It's just called circumference, isn't it? So our formula says to take 2 pi r times h. I would like you to try and get that much information down while I save it. <laughs> 